Hi, just as a reminder, I'm a narrator on Chilling, the awesome horror app that features over 1,000 horror stories, over a dozen narrators, some of whom you might know from YouTube, as well as full-length novels and exclusive series and Chilling originals. You can select and change the ambient sound in the background of the stories whenever you want, without affecting the story you're listening to, and we release hours of new stories every week. Click the link in the description to download and start your free trial to see if you like it. Also, Chilling is always doing fantastic giveaways, and in October, they're giving away a PS5 bundle that includes the disc version console, two games, and some Chilling merch. Click the link in the description to learn how you can win. Best of luck. Several years ago, I used to live in a small house near the city that I was renting. One day, I went to a pretty large mall near my house to do some shopping. I was there for a decent amount of time, maybe like two hours. I had just visited the last store that I was planning to for the day and was about to head home. As I was walking towards the exits, I felt a tap on my shoulder. I turned around to see a man standing there. He was shorter, with glasses and a green jacket on. He said that he didn't want to alarm me, but he noticed that there was a man who appeared to be following me for a while. He said he noticed it when he was in the last store that I was in, and he saw a guy seemingly following me wherever I went. He said that when I left, the man did as well. He said the guy was a ways back now, standing near a bench with a black jacket on. I didn't really know what to say other than thanks for the heads up. I had no idea that there was a guy apparently following me. The guy in the green jacket then walked away past me for the exit. The mall was pretty crowded, and I scanned my eyes around for a man in a black jacket, but I didn't notice one. He very well could have been there though, because there were probably a hundred people in my line of vision with how busy the mall was on that day. I left the mall out to go to the parking lot where my car was, but I kept a careful eye out. The parking lot as well was crowded with tons of cars and some people walking in or going out. When I got to my car, I went inside and then looked around again. I didn't notice anything suspicious like somebody following me, but the whole time I drove home, I looked to make sure that there was no car following me for a long period of time. I wasn't followed home, and that made me feel a lot better. Maybe some random creep at the mall had followed me through one store. So what? I didn't even know if it was true. Maybe the guy that told me I was being followed was wrong. Anyways, over the next few days, everything was normal. But then, things changed one night. As I was at home, I got a phone call at nearly midnight. When I picked it up, whoever was on the other end of the line hung up almost immediately. This happened again several nights later but this time it was even later at night. Then, the next week, I got a strange letter in the mail with no return address on it. It was an envelope addressed to me typed out on a computer. When I opened it up, there was literally nothing inside of it. Now I was starting to feel uncomfortable about things. Somebody was messing with me for some reason, and I had no idea who they were or why. It was the middle of the night, and I was fast asleep until I was awoken from the sound of a pounding coming from not the front door, but the back door of my house. It was extremely loud and was a fast, repeated banging noise. I got up and left my bedroom to go to the kitchen where the back door was. My heart was racing, but I had to see who was there. I was careful not to be in the view of the window of the back door and went to look out the window at the kitchen sink. I looked outside and could sort of see that there appeared to be a man there. He looked pretty big and was wearing a black jacket. But other than that, I couldn't see anything because it was really dark. I also didn't get a view of his face at all. This whole time, the pounding on the door continued. I returned to my room, and then my phone started to ring. I answered it, but didn't say a word. On the other end, I heard a deep voice say, Let me in. I hung up immediately and was about to dial the police when the knocking stopped. I waited for a few minutes before going back into the kitchen and carefully looking out the window again. The man was gone, but I had no idea where he was now. I went around the house carefully and made sure that all of the window shades were covering all the windows and all the doors were locked. Then I went back into my bedroom. I stayed up for another hour, but nothing else happened. I didn't feel safe anymore at my house, and I stayed at my parents' house the next night and all the way up until the lease of my house was up, which was only a couple of weeks. After that, I moved into a new place. Since then, I haven't had any problems but I still don't know who it was that was stalking me.
I live by myself in a one-story house that I own. Last year, it was during the summertime, and I was sleeping with the window open a crack to let more cool air in. My bedroom is at the front side of the house, and there's a giant row of large bushes that are along the side of the house, and they stop just at the side of my window. I was woken up from my sleep when I heard the noise of rustling in the bushes. I'm a pretty light sleeper, but with the window open, the noise was rather loud. When I woke up, I looked to the window, but I kept my blinds down just above the roughly three inch crack in the window, so I really couldn't see outside at all. I flicked on the light, which was right at my bedside, and my room then lit up. I got out of bed and went to the window to see, but then I heard more rustling in the bushes. I didn't see anything as I walked over there, and I was quite confident that the noises were caused by an animal, likely a deer. There was a pretty big woods and a park bordering my next door neighbor's backyard, so we would often get all kinds of wild animals wandering in our yards at night. When I got to the window, I lifted up the blinds and looked outside, but still didn't see anything. Whatever had been there was now gone. After that, I just went back to bed. Probably a couple of nights later, almost the exact same thing happened. I was once again sleeping and woke up in the night to the sound of the bushes moving. I had my window open a few inches again, and my blinds mostly down. Everything was just as it had been all week. I sat up and turned my lights on again. I looked to the window and just barely saw movement of something going away. I couldn't tell what it was at all because of how dark it was, but I had a feeling that maybe it wasn't an animal, but a person. I went over to the window and looked out of it again, but they were gone. This time, I closed the window and locked it and put the blinds down all the way. I was able to go back to bed after that without a problem. I was telling myself it was just an animal, but I just had a creepy feeling that it wasn't. The very next night, I was up late. It was a Friday night and I was watching TV in my bed. I hadn't put my blinds down yet because I wasn't ready to go to sleep. It was probably around one o'clock in the morning and I saw something out of the corner of my eye. I turned and looked to the window. That's when I saw a man standing right there facing me, looking directly at me. He was wearing a white t-shirt and had long, sort of messy hair and a slight beard. When I saw him, he didn't run away. Instead, he started to approach the window. I ran out of the room to the farthest away location in the house that I could get to. Then I called the police. When I spoke with them, I told them everything. I even remembered to include how the man was likely at my house other nights too. Meanwhile, I didn't hear any more noises from the window or anything as I waited for the police, and when they arrived, they searched the entire property, but the man was now gone. I talked with them for a while, giving them all the details that I could, but ultimately, they left with me not feeling that much better. My only hope was the fact that the police showed up would scare the man from coming back. The next night, everything was fine, but the night after that, I woke up in the night to noise again. My window was closed now, so I would no longer hear the bushes moving. This time, I woke up to the sound of a bang against my bedroom window. It was a loud noise as if somebody was trying to break the glass. I turned my light on and sat up. In the past, that scared the man off, but this time it didn't. I heard another loud bang on the window. I couldn't see the guy because my blinds were closed, but I knew he was there, and I called the police again and ran out of the room. I couldn't believe how this guy would not leave me alone. There was then another loud bang from the window, and then another one moments later. This time, I heard the glass starting to break. I was so nervous that I ran to the front door and grabbed my keys. The next bang broke more glass, and the man was sure to get inside the house now. When I started to hear movement near the window, I opened my front door quietly, went outside, closed the door, and then sprinted out from my car. When I got inside, I started it and drove away from there. I drove around the block in nearby neighborhoods until I got another call from the police saying that they were there. When I returned, to my surprise, they had caught the man. It was a huge relief to me. He had broken into my house and smashed my window and apparently was searching through the house for me and was found in my basement. This happened several months ago. I work in an office building in the city and parking can be a little bit tough. So I often park at a ramp a few blocks away and walk the rest of the distance. I also usually take a walk during my lunch hour in the summertime, and I eat at a park bench. I pretty much always sit at the same bench every day. When I'm there, there's always other people in the park, but never too many. One day, when I arrived at the park, a woman was sitting in my bench. I didn't sit at the same bench, but instead sat at the one next to it. The woman was wearing sunglasses and had dark brown to blackish hair. Over the course of sitting there, we ended up starting a conversation, 
She asked if she could get my phone number. She said her name was Amy, and I didn't see the harm in it. I had a good time talking to her, so I gave her my number. She told me that she would call me later. She never did, though. After a few days went by, I hadn't heard from her. But I didn't mind, really. In fact, I mostly forgot all about it. But one day, when I was leaving work, I had gotten to my car at the parking garage. I was getting inside when I thought I noticed Amy sitting in a car on the other side. I got in my car, then looked again. It was definitely her, and she was parked kind of far away. She had on her sunglasses again, and I thought about waving, but she seemed to be on her phone and really focused on something. Plus, she had never texted or called me, so I just drove away. Figured that she also parked in that parking lot for work, but I had never seen her in there before. Several days later, I was back home and cooking some food at night. Afterwards, I went into the living room to eat and watch some sports. When I did, I glanced out the front window. I saw a car parked on the street that usually wasn't there. Now normally, that's a detail that I wouldn't really care about, and I'm not sure why, but this time, I wanted to look at it. I went right up to the window and looked. There was a woman in the driver's seat with sunglasses on, and it looked a lot like Amy. I couldn't believe why she would be parked outside of my house on my street. It was very strange. I wanted to know what she was doing here. So I went outside to my front yard. As soon as I stepped outside though, her engine started up, and when I got a few steps closer, she sped away. After that, I never saw her again. I never knew what her last name was, or if her first name was even really Amy. I still wonder if she was stalking me, or what.